Hi guys. Today I'm setting out on my own to climb this mountain. And then I'm going to sleep outside without a tent. So it's half past nine in the morning and I've just left. Here we have our map of Italy and towards the north we have a place called Modena. So we set off from the outskirts of Modena and we've just driven an hour and ten minutes in a roughly southwesterly direction to the Apennine Mountains. Now we're at a place called Monte Orsaro which is here on the map and we're going to be heading over towards the summit of Kuzna. So just show you where we are we have the Rifugio which is a uh, mountain accommodation they do food and uh, nice warm accommodation, but that's only for normal people, so I won't be staying there. And uh, over where the clouds are, that's the uh, towards the summit that I'm attempting to climb today. So you can see between here and the clouds, uh, a thick wooded area between here and the summit. So it starts off very wooded, there'll be quite a few things to see there. And then uh, we'll get into the clouds and we might not see very much, but let's see how it pans out. So here we are, nearly ready to set off. But before I do that, I just want to go into the car and have a little chat with you about why I'm here today. Why am I doing this? I'm about to climb a mountain on my own in some pretty poor weather conditions. So you might be asking yourself that question. It's a good question. And uh, the simple answer is I've got some stress in my life at the moment. And I know that for me, this is gonna absolutely destroy that. And when I get back, I'm gonna be a new man. You may not appreciate this. If you've never put yourself in a situation like this in nature on your own, then you might struggle to understand where I'm coming from. But if you've ever done it yourself, then I'm sure you'll appreciate what I'm about to say. One of the most amazing experiences of my life was when I was 19 and I went to the Canadian Rockies. I went there on my own and I was alone walking and camping in bear country. And I had a bear encounter so I'll make another video about that. Anyway, I was out there and to be honest with you, I was scared. I was a 19 year old lad. I was two days walk away from the nearest road. I hadn't seen a human for a couple of days. And at night time, when you've got your little tent there, you go 50 meters away to hang your food up in the trees. You know, you hear animal noises and things. And while you're walking around there with your torch in this dense forest, you, you just can't see, all you can see are trees. You can't see anything other than trees. It's just an incredibly intense experience. Overcoming these fears and just persevering and winning your own personal battle against whatever it is that's, that's scaring you in that particular moment. It just is so empowering and it gives you an, an amazing sense of, of satisfaction. Different people get this feeling in different ways. Some people might do a triathlon and beat their personal best, or some people might jump out of a plane and, and parachute. In the end, it's the same result. You're pushing yourself. You're going beyond what you know you're capable of, and you're going into the, the realm of what you believe you're capable of and you, you're extending that threshold. So the fact that the weather is poor today is actually a good thing because it adds that extra element into the equation. Another thing that I plan to do here is bivy out tonight. So I'm gonna be sleeping outside. I will be open to the elements. And this part of Italy, it does have a wolf population. So there's a minuscule risk here. Um, I was in more danger driving here in my car, seriously. So let's not exaggerate the risk here, but when I'm alone tonight in my sleeping bag and it's dark, just having that very, very small possibility in the back of my mind that at some point in the night I might wake up to find some wolves near me, that certainly adds that element of, of fear. And again, this is what I'm here for. I want to push myself. And when I go back home tomorrow, safe and sound, I'm gonna um, feel a massive sense of achievement and I'm gonna, because I've been back to basics, 
being aware of the small important things about life getting water getting your next meal looking after yourself from external dangers these are things that we're designed to do and that we don't do in our normal modern lives so i'm excited so i'm going to stop talking now i'm going to go and climb this mountain hi ho hi ho it's up here we go Here we go then. Now you might be looking at my bags and thinking, this guy's crazy. Yeah, I know I've got a lot of stuff here, but it's going to be a very cold night, so I need a decent sleeping bag and, um, and decent equipment that I've got with me. But when it comes to the actual climbing, I'm going to um, basically cache a lot of my stuff. I'm going to leave my sleeping bag, the big pack and the non-essential equipment, I'm going to leave that um, in the location that I plan to spend the night tonight, which I don't know where that's going to be. I'm going to assess the situation as I move along. And then I'm going to use my little day sack and take that up to the top of the hill. So it's okay. I'll be all right. So I only left the car five minutes ago and it's uh, half past two in the afternoon. I hope that you like the little chat we had there in the car because it took me ages. I re-recorded things so many times. So uh, I hope you didn't find it too boring. Anyway, it's uh, mid-afternoon now. I need to crack on. You might be thinking, what on earth is he doing? His short sleeves. Well, anyone who's ever been walking with a decent weight before I'll tell you you create your own heat as you're walking so this is probably a decent amount of clothing to have on for these conditions and of course it's always under review and you can always stop and put your jacket back on if you feel that it's necessary I've just stopped take my heart rate and uh, going uphill like this with the weight that I've got. I've currently got a heartbeat of 168 beats per minute so it's uh, a good workout. Guys I've been walking now for one hour and already I am in the zone. Um, it's just natural human instinct that we all have inside us. Um, sounds a little bit melodramatic perhaps, but when you're in the mountains with other people, with friends, you're climbing, you could be doing exactly what I'm doing now, but as you're walking along, you're chatting together, you have that moral support, you don't notice what's going on around you. Whereas when you're on your own like this, just, just have a look around. Listen to the sounds of the animals. You very quickly tune into to what's on going on around you. You start to see footsteps in the in the snow or in the mud, and you subconsciously start to identify what these things might be. It's just it's incredible, and you forget completely about anything that's going on in your life, work, school, whatever it may be. That, that could be bothering you. This is such a good way of clearing your head. Honestly, as I'm walking along, I'm just super tuned into my surroundings and I feel perfectly at home here. This is what humans were designed to do. We were designed to, to be at one with nature. I sound like a tree hugger now, but it's the truth. We were designed to survive in, in the great outdoors and, and that's what I'm doing today. It's, it's a very short journey. I'm no Bear grills here, I'm just a guy having a walk, I'm going to go up the top of a mountain and I'm going to sleep outside. And these simple things that you can do in your life, they really they have a lot of gravity and they really can ground you again and give you a really solid base to start again from if you've got a new challenge in your life that you want to uh, face up to. Doing a little trip like this can really settle your mind and I highly recommend it. If you've never done it before, go with some friends get some experience first, but once you're at the level where you feel comfortable enough to be safe, then go out on your own 
and do it. It's just amazing. I'm a couple of hours away from the summit here. There are several different options open to me. Um, I could, I can, stop at the top of the tree line so I could descend a little bit, find a place to stash my gear, and then that would be my base to return to later on, pick up my sleeping bag and everything else, and uh, you know, get my head down for the night. That's one option. And another option, I could just push on with all this ridiculous amount of gear that I've got. And a couple of advantages to that. A, it's a better workout. So we all need exercise these days, don't we? Um, and the other possibility is that I could bivy either on or very close to the summit. Obviously it's more exposed up there to the weather, etc. but the, uh, the forecast isn't too bad. Somewhere between minus two and minus seven, depending on which forecast you look at. And the sleeping bag that I've got will uh, keep me quite comfortable in that temperature. I'll have a bivy bag or the, uh, a kind of military, a camouflage, camouflage tarpaulin type of affairs to put over the top of me. So if it starts to snow, that will keep the moisture off me. I'm pretty sure that will keep me well away from any wildlife that might be around here anyway, because there's no, uh, no food up there uh, around 2,000 metres, so it might be a good bet. So I'm, I'm actually undecided. I'm keeping you posted here, and I'll give you an update later on. A few minutes have passed since my last update, and while I was looking at the map, looking at my different options and deciding what to do, I actually just realised that I haven't eaten since this morning. So. I had some uh, biscuits for breakfast this morning with coffee at about half seven maybe and it's now 10 to 4 and I haven't eaten anything since this morning so I'm going to descend back to the tree line and I'm going to make myself some food and then I'll see what time it, it becomes and I'll evaluate my options from there. Just come back down to the tree line to start making some food. As I said before you notice footprints in the snow and in the mud. Um, you, know, you really do start to switch on to uh, the world around you so it's really interesting. Just yeah, how your instincts start to uh, to come back out from their deepest hiding places. Yeah. 